moved a little bit, but it is going to be the Zeri on blue side ban, which speaks a lot to what I imagine uh, Azza will be good or will be like heading towards what we can expect from him for a little bit in the future. I think that this champion can be B1, can be Vix on blue side, is a very powerful ADC with the way her W got changed as well. Absolutely chunks people. I need to really be careful for how the, uh, the Zeri is being utilized if it's picked. Yeah, no surprise to see the Wukong for Schoenfire. It's been his most played this so far, two games on it already. We have seen Jocko. him go for stuff like the volley. So, yeah, for Jocko, sorry. <laughs> a Trundle, Trundle response, though. Actually, interesting. Uh, whether this wow. goes top lane or jungle, uh, this is also a bit of a, I guess, flex pick, I suppose. Like I say, top and jungle can be played, but we've also seen a little bit of Sejuani top across a few regions. So, that could be a blind pick of choice. And if Oplon opt into this top lane counter pick, they may well try and use the trundle a little bit later to remove some of the tanks. Yeah, I think the uh, the trundle pick, very interesting. Obviously, it's something we see get banned against uh, Zanzara every game. It kind of, to me, speaks to maybe the style that Shunfire has played in a few of his games. We like to play a lot of the volley bear, kind of cater, cater and outsource pressure towards his lanes. So that might be why he's gone for that. I don't imagine that goes top lane unless there's a particularly good matchup for it. In response, obviously, Solara going to take that very strong 2v2 of the Kaiser Nautilus. Worth noting, there's a slight interaction between Nautilus and the Trundle. If the Trundle sees a hook going on to and a carry can pillar in front of it and make the Nautilus not quite hit it. But that's a very rare instance that we see those happen. Corky locked in in the mid lane for Peng. Very strong scaling option for Oplon out of the mid lane already. The Rakan locked in on two. This champion got buffed as well coming into 12-11. Uh, despite his uh, you know, hindrances that we'd seen from Enchantress, for example, getting bullied out of lanes, still comes out of the this patch uh, a lot better off and still engages very well, uh, like we've seen from Rakan's time and time again. That's going to be the case. As they're burning away the uh, burning away Victor, we're going to take away another safe blind pick as well for the mid lane. Ari as well makes a lot of sense. Seen Scarlet play a lot. Um, no surprise there. And it looks like they're just taking away, you know, the common answers, I suppose, to Corky, the ones that are going to try and farm up, try and scale alongside it. Taking away top laners from Dalek. So the Gangplank's still on the board. We've seen this be an LFL special. A lot of top laners default to this in a blind pick scenario. Does remove their flex pick and actually gives a lot of draft agency over to Gcore. He gets his pick of the litter here, knowing exactly what he's going up against bot lane. This speaks that they want to, you know, heavily prioritize how well he'll be able to play things out if they ended up blocking it in. They don't, they go for the Ezreal, they retain that top lane counter uh, and they're going to let Dalek at the very least have his run of things. The Ezreal locked in. Uh, we are going back to obviously these uh, more safe ADCs, Kite and Orsalus as a 2v2 should have the run of things down in that bot lane, but come a little bit later on, that mid game spike will definitely be going G-Core's way. I think interestingly enough, actually, I'm thinking about it right now. If they lock like a safe blind, like a Gnar or like a Scion, for example, they're like Trundle mm -hmm. pretty decent into something like a Scion, no? And if you do that, yeah, exactly. the, danger, the danger is they flex it into the top lane. Okay, this could actually be quite smart. Yeah, that's what that's what I was thinking. Uh, like I say, the Trundle is a double flex. And please, oh my word. Okay, please flex the Trundle. If they flex the Trundle now, I've absolutely gigabrained this from the start. Uh, they've got options to take Shernfire, something a little more aggressive. They uh, largely still missing that consistent physical damage, I suppose. Ezreal can be that damage threat going later and later. Uh, but I think that Shernfire here, if you can go for something, even the Lilia is still available. Ah. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, okay. All right. It's fine. It's fine. It's still okay. Trundle still does well versus Sejuani, even when it's in the jungle and the top lane. It would have been we nice can, to We can see be that. a little sad. It would have been. But nevertheless... All in R5. Uh, we've seen actually one of those be very prevalent. It was Vitality B last week that took the all yep. on R5 and absolutely demolished with it. So maybe maybe that happens again. But Sejuani has a well, very remember, good remember how much, tanks. Remember how much LDLC loves this Orden pick. It's literally they're mm. willing to be one it. Um, yeah. apparently, it's a, apparently it's like very broken, according to some people, if anyone you ask. Wouldn't make sense considering the durability Ooh. patch. But talk me, talk me through these drafts. Oh, well, I, I'm looking at the... Yeah, I'm looking at the junglers here. Uh, yeah. It looks like it's Sejuani jungle Wukong top, which is still absolutely fine. Uh, Wukong's jungle clear did get nerfed a little bit. He lost 20% damage off of his Nimbus strike, so his clear speed did go down a little bit. Those were one of the nerfs to touch on for the Wukong. The other one that his W ability is a little bit longer cooldown in the early stages of the game, and probably thought the mid stages as well. You put points into that last, so until level 18, you don't really start to see any return on investment on those um, on the on the, on the Wukong W. 
But we'll have to wait and see, get those all clarified, see where they're, they're going. There we go. Sejuani top lane uh, actually comes through. Uh, but I think that Sejuani top has a very good matchup versus the Yawn specifically. Sejuani does very good versus tanks. She has percent HP damage, which is why I would have loved to see them flex the Trundle into the top lane and try and go for something more uh, carry oriented in the jungle for Shurnfire. Welcome back then, everybody. Slurry versus Oplon, game number one. One and five teams going at it head to head against each other. Five man start for Solari. I'm not sure if we have John Jake with us. Looks like Solari are hiding, hiding out in this mid lane. Hook goes out level one. We are just experiencing a few tech difficulties here, so just making sure that we've got everything ready. Myself and Jake will be back with you shortly. The game's going to continue, though. That is absolutely fine. I'm um, also just making sure that both of us are here and both of us are present for the moment. That level one outing by Solari. None too successful. They went for a hook, didn't quite land it. Trade of wards on respective blue buffs, though. Uh, so both of these start or oh, both of these junglers going to have vision on where the other one starts. For Hello? the most part now. There we go, he's back. Hello, he's back. I've, re Throws I've returned. Draft, but you're here I've re again returned now. from beyond the void and I've come back bearing many gifts. Um Ooh, I've seen what, gifts? You know, what do I have? Well you've got the gift of my presence, and my presence is a present, so you know. Ah, uh, okay, I see. In any case, we're into the game now. Talk me through, Rude Dude. Like bring me back into it. My internet just completely froze me out. Like, I think someone like drove over my like internet wire outside my house or something. I was gone for about twenty seconds. I see. My focus has been broken. Bring me back. No, that's okay. We'll return to the semblancy of this game. Now, coming in, Jake, you said that this would be one of the games that we were expecting to be fairly quiet early on and potentially just count down to a 40 minute, 40 minute team fight where one team wins at an elder and ends up taking the game. And I can largely see that being the case once again. Uh, we have Corky Ezreal, two very good scaling options for Oplon. We have Azir and Kaiser, two very good scaling options for Solari. Uh, I do think there's a little more agency for the Solari bot lane to get things going. Kaiser Nautilus, obviously, a very powerful two versus two, already going in for slight scraps at level one. Uh, just putting down the pressure onto Twist and Gico. You can already see Gico with that teleport. Doesn't want to be fighting in the early stages. Hasn't got that combat summoner spell to really get things going. And the CS lead already, you know, really mounting for the bot lane of Solari, keeping Gico at bay. We know that this mid lane is going to be very boring. Uh, Corky is here, yada yada. We've seen this one for seasons, years, whatever's gone by. And then in this top lane, actually could be fairly bruisery, weirdly enough. Keo has gone for the ignite. Sejuani versus Orn is a favorable matchup for the Sejuani. Sejuani tends to have favorable matchups versus tanks. Uh, but actually what we are seeing is down on this bot side, uh, we've got Jocko invading, and this is going to be completely taken away, largely based off of the fact that they had bot lane priority to start off with. They can move Azra and Steel back in, keep these creeps in their favor, and there could be a fight on the spot side, though. Steel back is spotted. So like Oplon, maybe fancy their chances at least getting away from the Grom Pierce. Steel back, obviously, on that ward as well. It's going to dissuade any sort of aggression from Schoenfire. Schoenfire completely fine with the blue going astray there. It's the nature of how bot lane is going to be played out. To me, Oplon's game is very much getting to that later stages, playing around these objectives with that Gorky package on ultimate. Not really in a rush to get anywhere. No, just going to keep it nice and chill, like you mentioned, right? The, these early stages of the game should be fairly tepid waters. I do like the early advantage being built up by Jocko. He can now go back to his own jungle, get his leads uh, through, just having more camps available, uh, and making sure that he's going to have that advantage when those first recalls have come through. Already got that first base for Shurnfire. Ruby Crystal and Cloth Armor obviously going to be heading toward this tank style, but Jocko uh, looking to try and take away another crab. Trying to 
keep that snowball rolling really for the wukong and already up in levels he's got his second clear to start off as well if he fancies before that first back so uh, he's slowing down the time at which he'll be able to get out onto the map and make things happen but for right now uh got him enough gold to keep things going yeah completely and uh it's just going to continue to be slow, slowly paced out here as we see both junglers in their second clear. Obviously operating in a similar direction. And I'm expecting to be the case for me that Solari picks up some of these early dragons with the bot priority. And then it's going to be the case around a third or so dragon, Pop One can start to contest that back. Yeah, they, they really are just waiting for Corky missiles and the Corky poke to start absolutely absolutely obliterating Solari. Obviously, they have got this front line of Keo and he'll be able to absorb a little bit. Uh, of the damage using the using the, using the passive that Sejuani has already has got back to base picked up that tier working towards that Fimble Winter it looks like uh, and worth noting as well being on 1211 that these tank items that we're going to see Dalek Shernfire start to build up are a little bit cheaper it means getting to those components is a little bit easier for the top laners so the laning phase doesn't necessarily have to go quite as well for them to get those components in early doors yeah I completely agree with you there one of those games where I'm not expecting much to happen. I'm expecting, I mean, it could even be more like one of those ones. I mean, you remember the LCK game very, very recently where there was literally no first blood up until like very, very late in the game. I can anticipate. I mean, I, I think the only way that a kill really happens in this game is either a setup through mid with the Azir ultimate at Shre uh, with the Shreema Shuffle at level six or a support getting caught out on a uh, bad roam timer by enemy jungle and support. You see here, I can see the first. Uh, First dragon being taken down here is a little bit of an engage here from uh, Steelback. Yeah, and Jocko has finally got that first reset going. Uh, got the Sheen, got the long sword, and out onto the map now. Was looking to take the Drake. Has no camps of his own to go for. Just now see that Raptor respawn, so we'll be heading toward that. Keep himself ahead of the curve, largely off of, like we say, that early invade given from the bot priority. Uh, but now needs to see if he can accelerate that a little bit. Does have better items than Shen Fire, and we expect the Wukong to have slightly better trading in a 2v2 than the trundle with these items specifically obviously in a 1v1 uh, a trundle can hold his own with the chomp stealing away ad but uh the wukong with that sheen with the slight item advantage should have a pretty good time of things as well twist has uh gone for the hantera style and granted he's not topside but he is playing rakan and has abandoned his ezreal for the last few minutes he's sort of been shadowing helping shenfire get his way through the early stages of the game just a slight confusion on what the game plan is from Oplon here. You've seen the Wukong top lane. Seems to be the case that either they're playing for the mid priority, but expect them to maybe go towards that dragon at some point. But Shermfire prioritizing his top side camps just for now. Doesn't want to lose. Perhaps doesn't want to lose the tempo on those. You can see as well that they, they even roamed Dalek in for that. They were looking for a mid lane play right there, but just didn't quite find the angle. They were potentially looking to start up that Drake again. Didn't quite have the timing on it, so. It's a little bit of an expenditure that ultimately nets them nothing. And now with Solari looking aggressive down on this bot side, you can see Gcore is level six. And so hitting that marker fairly early on twist, just the level four, a combined level of 10 between the two, so or between the two bot laners. But that true shot barrage probably just dissuades any sort of engage coming through from Solari, just because as it is already fairly chucked out going into the trade. There's gonna be an engage here from Solari. Never mind. Still back and as it going aggressively. They use the ignite onto twist. Those summoners burn in response. It's just a summoner spell advantage then. Lovely stuff for Oplon. It mitigates the level of all-in from Solari for the next three minutes or so. Top side of the map is resulting in a Herald, which is likely to get traded down. On this bot side, you can see Shenfire already headed towards that dragon. And for the most part now, uh, we are just seeing these trades. I love Herald early on in exchange for a dragon. I think that Solari have done a very good job here prioritizing the right sort of thing. They can get themselves a nice influx of gold through that Rift Herald to try and take down this Corky's tier 1 turret potentially. Uh, you can already see Peng slightly struggling in the mid lane up against Scarlet. Down a level, down a lot of farm as well. Despite those uh, uh, those little wayward roams from Shernfire, the flexes from Twist. Uh, Peng still a little bit further behind the curve than we may have anticipated. But at certain points... Corky just does damage. It's a little bit like the Jace syndrome I talked about. There's a certain window where Peng is going to come online, where this Corky will simply deal damage when those rockets are starting to come through and we have maybe the two, three item spike hit. Yeah, absolutely. I think being beyond the below the curve 
behind the curve, rather. Like, this is not the best uh, for Corky in terms of getting towards those items, but like you say, there will come a tipping point whereby that doesn't necessarily matter as much anymore. I think important to note as well is one of the main things I'm looking for Corky this game is in terms of the objective setup, how he uses the package, how he's able to get that around these objectives. I'm not a massive fan that Oplon were actually trading the dragon for the Rift Herald there. I think there was an opening a few minutes before that, which would have put your reset timers on that dragon a little bit further ahead. Push, um, push Shalari a few minutes ahead in terms of trading it. I think it necessarily needed to be a trade, but it's the way that it's unfolded now. About three or four minutes until that next dragon comes up. And Jocko with this Rift Herald, expecting to actually use that into the mid lane or the bot lane. I don't expect that goes towards the tank versus tank matchup. Now, you, you, know, you, you would like to think not, at the very least. Uh, we can hope to see breaking open mid, breaking open bot lane, potentially getting some gold into this Kaiser. Remember the win condition for Solari that we'd sort of drafted in early doors was Azza and Steelback in this bot lane. So far, they've held their own against Zhikor and Twist. CS lead as well for the Kaiser. And now they could be looking to use this timer that we've got from Scarlet pushing to make his play in the bot side. Peng here. Or Penga TP ready and available, excuse me, but 3v4 on the bot side. Nothing going to come from it though just yet as with Shit and Fire's hover, Solari call off the play and it actually gives a little bit of time now for Peng to push in that mid wave and get himself a good reset window. Yeah, it's a bit of a swinger, swings and roundabouts thus far as a 3v4, but obviously Twist getting the 6 there was the pinnacle there in terms of preventing that play from happening. Important to note now is that Peng slowly but surely Closing that gap, what was a 16 CS lead now? Only about on about nine or so. Let's see if he catches this next wave in time. Yeah, not going to use uh, the package to get back to the lane. This is that Herald breaking open, or attempting to take some plates off the mid lane turret, which sets up nicely for a second Herald. If Solari end up getting that, it means that second Herald charge will just take this turret out easily. Scarlet as well, getting funneled a little bit of gold. Jocko, the same thing, putting gold onto your Azir for the late game. Certainly not a bad thing by any metric. We just have to see whether or not these early game investments from Solari end up yielding any fruit later on. It is that slow paced early game that you talked about where, you know, 11 and a half minutes into the game right now, Don Jake. Nothing particularly to note. We've got a dragon spawning in a little over a minute's time. Shouldn't be too long before that next one is up on the board and we get to see then finally what Rift will be having for the first game of our Super Week. Remember, both of your teams, one and five so far, looking to find their second win. These are two teams that, from Spring, are also really battling it out up against potential for relegation. Don't want to be playing in the promotion tournament come the end of the split. Would obviously love to stay in LFL Division 1. Uh, and a win here certainly puts them on a good track to doing so. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's all about just keeping that positive record against some of the other teams that you're going to be meeting at the... Uh... Lower down ends of the pack. So, uh, not a time to necessarily lose hope. It's always good to be optimistic, but in necessarily picking up these wins, much like you're saying, Rude, dude, very important for both of these teams. And surprisingly enough for me on this top side, Dalek actually kind of kind of handling Keo for the time being. Keo obviously went for the combat summoner spell with the ignite, no flash. Also has the, I, I'll say it's slightly better matchup here. Orn W obviously also has a little bit of damage in in, in tow. I think Sejuani largely favoured up against tanks for the most part. And that's you know, sort of why she's resurged as this top lane pick on 12.11. Scarlet waiting for a shuffle play here in the mid lane. Jocko's present too. Yeah, there. Kyo throws the Sejuani ult, but it goes wide. Peng able to W away from that. That is the, uh, pretty much the first uh, line of aggression that's been drawn in the sand by Solari. The sand soldier is one of the beneficiaries of that, but not quite able to find too much from it. I like that. I like that one. Uh, sand soldier drawn in the sand. Very good. Uh, but the, like you say, first move made to nobody's particular avail. Uh, you burn Sejuani Se ulti, which ultimately isn't going to be too impactful could become relevant now as we see the drake spawning in less than 20 seconds you don't have that sejuani ult to contest steel back now going back to base and it looks like they're setting up for this trade once again Oplon gonna start off the dragon you can see skull and jocko working on the blue buff right now but could very well work their way into the top side jungle and set themselves up for that secondary rift herald with the way that it's going there's a world where Oplon can contest both peng has this package too wouldn't be surprised if we saw a skirmish on this top side. Shenfire is going to have Smite. 
when that package comes down as well and we know the team fight prowess that that provides you i said they're going to go into this bot side instead and said seed really everything on the herald and yeah, they are doing that wonder if they're perhaps privy to the fact that sejuani had come in towards that bot side so they would have been able to get a 5v4 so not exactly deeming it worth the resources necessary towards it mm. perhaps one thing to know is a uh, callback to what oh. you were saying earlier, Rude Dude. If they do put that Rift Herald in the mid lane, it is going to drop, no matter what. And I expected a, a slightly more stand, st st stalwart defense of this mid lane turret. It looks like Scarlet, you know, you can see he's feeling a little bit aggressive. Uses the Sand Soldiers to get away. But they're not even going to need this Rift Herald, honestly. The way that Peng's been roaming about the map to try and help out, the way Scarlet has had pretty much perma push in this mid lane that mid lane tier one turret is going to fall fairly quickly unless Oplon are willing to commit lots of resources to keep it standing uh, i think that like i say maybe the, the decision making from Oplon not necessarily what i would have anticipated it to be if they'd have gone up toward that herald with the package maybe they'd have had a bit more of a fight uh, maybe they could have generated some advantages for themselves we we may never know item spikes coming through though and honestly i look across the the items for oplon versus the items for solarian if i'm looking at the two carries specifically leandri's versus a, a mana moon I, I mean scarlet wins hands down in that regard and in fairness Div divine sundra versus kraken slayer you can take it or leave it uh, those components though certainly going to be a bit more favorable for azza with the double long sword over just the tier and boots <laughs> Yeah, and this game's gone somewhat, uh, well, pretty much exactly how we'd expected it to go. Very, very slow, no kills, 16 minutes into the game. Um, probably going to be the case, but I think one of the things that's gone slightly differently to how we would have anticipated is I was expecting to be the case that Solari would have the ability to move on towards these first couple of dragons with the fact they have the Wukong versus the Trundle, and also a lot of, like, bot pro in the early game that we saw. Oplon done a good job of, like, sneaking out that first dragon and then moving towards the second. Although it was the case that I don't think it needs to be a trade. This could be an engagement. This could be our first fight of the game. It's still back to getting engaged on. He always teleported into the background. There's a the teleport coming out. There's the first blood. All there. Jocko's using the ult. Orn ult comes out here. It's going to land onto Scarlet. Shunfire's still going, but he's going to get stunned up by Kyo. He can find the stun here. Any second now, Scarlet's found the return kill. Scarlet goes low. Poor Keith. One more Q will do it, but he doesn't quite manage to find it. They've stunned up Kyo. He doesn't have any way of getting out apart from a Q over the wall. One for one and a rather extensive trade. A lot of things burn. Really, really good pathing from Keo. Uh, to try and get out of that fight. You can see everybody from Oplon blocking his Q. He's there like, no, please uh, let me over the wall. And they, they find the Arctic Assault. Really good stuff from Keo to prevent uh, himself being stopped from escaping. It is that one for one overall. In terms of where your kills have gone, Solari probably coming out on top. They get a kill onto their Azir, goes back to base, picks up the needlessly large rod versus Trundle, who goes back to base, picks up a Kindle gem. You know, these combat powers are slowly, slowly stacking in Solari's favor. They can now use this window where they got the final kill in the fight to try and place the Herald down successfully. So they're going to get Azad this turret too. First brick of the game falling to Solari somewhat uh, expectedly. Granted, it wasn't in the lane I was anticipating, but... Able to get Solari's AD carry now, that beneficiary of their first win, the one who really carried them to success, Azza, getting him that little bit of extra gold, really going to be putting gold in the right spots again. Absolutely, and just like that, although it was a one-for-one, one, you can see with that mid lane turret being broken down on the bot lane like you just mentioned, Rude, dude. It's going to be a gold lead, slightly ballooning, 2,000 gold now for Solari. See, Important to note what Oplon have in advantage is those two dragons building towards this infernal soul condition they have. But with gold leads being built, it's important to note that it might be the case now that they can get bullied away from that with the item advantages. Yeah, uh, they're, they're going to have to poke their way into this fight. I think if Oplon can set up, they can make it difficult for Solari to enter. They have got Ezreal Corky, right? There is poke that exists there. But for the most part, if we see Solari set up properly, they also have got that little bit of extra added poke damage. They've also got the really easy engage to come through. They've got Nautilus, Wukong, Sejuani, all of which very good at finding a single target isolated, potentially just teams that are isolated as well, and trying to punish them for it. With that Drake, like you mentioned, spawning now under the minute marker, it is Solari moving in. They're the ones setting up, and with Dalek and Kyo, neither of which having TP, it doesn't look like it's going to be a fight for this bot side unless they make their moves now. Looks like that's happening. Dalek is sacking off the top wave to try and get here in time. 20 seconds before the fight comes through. Scarlet with the aggressive shuffle doesn't find the scoop back onto Twist, but you can see level 13 versus Twist's level 7. 
There's some free time for the Azir. He's going to do damage. They're just going to take it straight up. Shermfire's going to have to go rather quickly here. Look in here. Ornhorn is going to be a smite fight between the two here. Can they get Jocko out of the pit? They've managed to do it. They need to burst it now before he gets back in. And they've got taken it. Jocko oh. goes back in. He gets the smite as well. Garlic goes down as a double kill for Kaiser as well. Here comes the package from Peng. But he is W'd into his death. He gets crushed off like ants off of a shoulder as Solari. Ooh. It's a quarter kill for Azza. And they couldn't finish the dragon in time, Rude, dude. Oh, not plant just headless chickens there in the pit. They didn't know where to focus, what to do. They've got Shenfire hitting the dragon that ends up getting smited away. The fight just going completely awry for Oplon as well. Five for zero. Solari took that one. Nobody was touching Azza. Scarlet was the focus of the fight largely, but it was it was still Scarlet able to survive. Azza was full HP. He picked up a quadra kill in that exchange, and Solari now firmly in control of the match. Really, really struggling uh, for the Alplon squad. Need to try and set themselves up, try and reassess, reevaluate how they go about these fights because that was not looking good. Not looking good for Alplon and their chances. Obviously, spoke about how this game was going to be an affair of moving towards that later game now. But now with a 5,000 gold lean, Solari back at getting that dragon. They've slowed down the win condition. It's an engage onto Shurnfire. He's used the red smite. And the ultimate in response here gets a lot of damage. Jocko goes low. Not going to have a W over the wall. He gets it. Kill now for Oplon if they choose to continue. Scarlet's Scarlet doesn't have forward. flash. And they find him. We can't quite see. Rikan goes forward here. Scarlet with a bit of overaggression means a shutdown over to Peng. Two kills and misfire. Trying to set up here in this push, but they might have overstayed here. Ornhorn goes on to Azza, but he flashes away. A position around the, dra around the Nash now with two dead. Do they choose to go for it? Still a little too scary. I think Azza is very scary in the team fights. Keo and Steelback, fairly decent front line as well for the Kaiser to go huge. Instead, they default back. They're going to set themselves up. And it looks like just secure some camps. Maybe would have liked to see them opt into the tier one turret, but that may have been a little bit difficult versus the amount of wave clear that they have got. Not too difficult for the Sejuani and Kaiser to clear that out as a duo, even up against the large forces that Alpon would have had in terms of numbers. But a good couple of kills, a nice little trade back, and we are starting to see those cracks seep into the Solari playstyle once again. A little too far forward, Steel, uh, Scarlet rather, dashing forward at a point where he shouldn't have done this hook. You know, starts off a re-engage, but TP committed by Dalek is what is necessary to turn around. And Keo really just not in the right spot, leaving Jocko to the Wolves a little bit. And then as soon as Scarlet does this dash right on top of the rest of Opal, and they're like, well, we're not really going to allow that. Twist dashes in, it only gets the exhaust, doesn't find the knockup, but that is enough. Like I said, those couple kills was a good shutdown uh, to get Star Scarlet falling. Uh, and we are getting kills now back in response. Peng picking up both of those. The carry of one up of Oplon's one victory. Getting a bit more agency in the match could be very good for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think him picking up more agency is important to know. Obviously going to be able to put out masses of damage, but it's still very much the case that Solari for right now do have control of the general map with their AD carry. Accelerated so much far further forward, obviously building towards that third item now. With all these outer turrets falling, they can push that vision line up. It should be the case that and as long as they get their tempo resets on time and they get their ability to move around the map as a team, the jungle and support can move together, get that vision set up. I do anticipate they can find themselves in a good position like they did last time for the dragon. But important to note is, with that package available now, with that Ornhorn horn as well, as long as Oppon aren't choked out of position, which could be the case, they should be able to find the good team fights. Yeah, and, and, and the thing with this composition for Oplan, I think, is that even if they are forced out of position, if they're not set up properly, they have really good ways of forcing themselves back in. You talked about the package, you talked about the Ornhorn. Those are fairly decent tools at long range. The package maybe not so much to be a primary engage source, but Peng, if you can use the TP, if you can use the package, can set up for a really good team fight for the rest of Oplan. Uh, we need to still see that come to fruition, though. Uh, and for the most part, that hasn't necessarily happened. It's been a couple picks, but team fights have been all Solari, really. And you can see they've got large control over the river. They've got three people on three different angles. Wherever Oplon go, they're going to face some sort of resistance, be it, you know, Jocko here. And it turns out they just walk in and force all of them back. But the five-man push through uh, happens to be enough. But now they've got to clear out vision in their own jungle, Oplon. Really don't have too much control over the river as Solari have got complete vision of what Oplan are doing. There's going to be an engage onto Shurnfire. He gets the ultimate out in response. Ornhorn here, but he gets gone onto Steelback here. Engage keep carries on, but Zcore takes a lot of damage here. 50% or so. Dragon is almost spawning in, in around 20 seconds or so. Zcore's going to back with that teleport now. 
I've been forced out of the of dragon area for now. And it looks like then with the Drake spawning in, in 10, 15 seconds, a little bit less. In fact, it is Opon who are going to have to force their way back in. Steal back a little bit chunked. You can see Penk has got TP. G calls TP into the mid lane. This isn't over just yet. It's going to be another smite fight. It was Wukong who won it last time. Jocko versus Shernfire. 3k is the dragon. Jocko's gone in for the engage here. They found Shernfire. Shernfire gets taken out by Azza. He's gone unstoppable. They're just going to turn back to the dragon now. And a counter engage be found. Peng has that package. Will he pull the trigger though is the question. In the case for now, Solari back out. They get the dragon. They scored it up 2-2 two -two now. They can see Opon go in for that mid lane. Take that mid turret. And just a little bit slow. The initial poke is enough. From Solari, Jiko oh, has to go back to base, get back the t with the TP. Peng does the same, but by the time they're both set up and ready to fight, Solari have already taken the Drake. They've already picked up that crucial objective. And Peng as well with this pack, he just picked it up and for the second fight in a row, really won't be able to find the useful, useful, usefulness effectively coming from it. There's a TP ward that would have been great for Alplon if they'd have just, you know, called it down and they could have used that pink ward. You'll see on the minimap right next to where Dalek is recalling. There's a world where if Peng uses that as his TP wall, he has a much better angle for the package. They decide not to go for the fight. And Solari just going to easily pick that up. They pick up a kill for themselves and immediately turn toward this Baron. Slow resets once again from Oplon have led them down this path of being very far behind on the play. It's gone down to 5k now. It's going to get taken before Oplon have anything to say about it. Peng W's out here. Steel back getting engaged on. Ornhorn comes out for the Nautilus assault and response has cancelled it. There's no engage now for Oplon. No option. Can they find Kyo? They managed to stun him up here. There's a lot of response out from Scarlet, but an ult goes wry. It is a Baron for one pick. Can they find anything more now? I will have to find a pillow on the Choco. <laughs> Can't find it quite. Up on steel, the Grump, but ultimately the Baron taken from under their noses and a really well-timed steal back depth charge. Uh, stops Dalek from committing a massive re-engage. Peng not with the package gives Solari this massive window for them to go for this Baron. And like we say, with Dalek and Shikod just a little bit late to the play, it gives Solari just enough time to find themselves that Baron buff. Now the question is, what can they do with it with three, with three turrets outside of the base still available to be taken? Oplon's uh, base, certainly not up for contestion just yet, but... Solari have got a lot of gold on the map out to go and collect if they want to go fetch it. Expect them to try and pick up those two economy turrets in the side lane worth 600 gold each. And in the mid lane, you can just keep Azza, keep Steel back there, rotate them toward either side lane. Make sure that this Kaiser is still continually farming up a storm, has reached that three item point. It is not with the Infinity Edge, but taking the Lord Dominic's regard, particularly with the tank buffs that came through. There's an extra 10 armor on that Randuins that we see in Chainfire's inventory. Uh, so the LDR certainly having a lot of work being done for it here, particularly when there are two such high HP tanks on the other side. Absolutely. So hard to get through onto this Kaiser. Having that flash available now, it's going to be so difficult for Twist to find that engage. is a little bit further behind here than you would have anticipated. Oh. He's going to get chunked out though a little bit. Interesting, interesting. Kind of, that was a really big game of chicken, and one that ultimately Shenfire lost. Uh, they would have had to pull the trigger at some point. They don't go for it right there. A little bit of a dash forward from Dalek, but that's ultimately none too consequential. Kyo standing, trying to defend against Mystic shots up against that Hanna minion, which is doing a lot of the work right now. And it is just Solari sieging in two lanes incredibly effectively. Mid tier two has fallen. Bot tier two going to fall soon. I'm seeing K, so an Orn ult doesn't land onto anyone there. Goes missing. This bounds the engage onto Steelback. Steelback might get caught here. He goes out of stasis in about half a second here. They do find one, and after the tragic Ornhorn, surprisingly a victory for Oplon. It feels like Solari don't quite know when they can go for these fights, quite how to approach them either. Because I think that they win 5v5s, and I think that they think that they win 5v5s. They're just constantly not quite finding the, the right place to be, quite how they're supposed to be navigating these team fights, and it's leaving one person just a bit too far forward. Keo got picked off around the Baron. We've just seen Steel back now. Picked off, wasting that stopwatch, ultimately for, for nothing there. They get the mid-tier 2 turret, but that's about it. The Baron timer about to wear off, and... Overall, a fairly underwhelming Baron push by Solari. You can see the buff now just this second has elapsed. They get one mid-tier two turret with a Baron. And for Oplon, I think they're very happy with that exchange. Yeah, I think Oplon, you kind of want to get towards these item spikes. I think one of the major problems is now dealing with the Azir. 
Well, so the Corky, I feel like Corky has to do so much more here. Jocko's found Z-Core, though. Z-Core has Flash. Can he get out? No, no, he can't. As has found it. That is going to be a crucial kill before this next dragon spawns. I'm not sure Z-Core will be up for it. Does have the teleport, though. Yeah, and that should, that should just be the dragon going over. At the very least, it's going to be Kompui, control of the spot side jungle, going to Solari. You can see that they're actually, for up on side, trading out turrets. It's the bot tier two this time out. It looks like Peng's going for the top tier one in response. So a little bit of gold given back. But once again, this is largely beneficial to Solari. And they have no carries here. All comes out, lands onto Scarlet. Seems like a bit of a miscommunication in terms of whether they want to go here. Garlic saw an opportunity. Peng's backing. Doesn't seem like there's going to be any ability mm, for them to get in here. There's no wards to fill up with food. Yeah, it's going to have to be just a close short TP if they want to try and contest this. Again, I think this is a little bit of a lapse in judgment. If Peng stays for that top tier two, they get a little bit of gold back. There's no way they're contesting this dragon. Uh, they could have had a little bit extra bang for their buck. But ultimately, not going to find anything else. It is now soul point for Solari. Five minutes time and they're going to have a infernal soul on their hands. We'll see a bit of a scuffle on this top side as Oplon try and take a little bit of gold back in this top side. Wolves uh, go over. Yeah, they're going probably to do so as well. But ultimately, that's not the greatest trade if you are Oplon. Could have had a lot more and Solari are going to be very happy with the notion that in five minutes' time they can at least force a 5v5. Yeah, absolutely. They've got complete options of what direction they want to go and they've even got a little bit of time to play with if it comes down to being that Baron trade. Obviously, you would probably prioritize the uh, soul in every scenario there, but it's that kind of eternal thing we talk about whereby they have the movement here, they have the agency, they have the ability to really press their advantage. 6k gold lead up now. It's Oplon's game to respond. Let's see. Uh, they, they, they have to try and find some answers. Now, remember, they have got crucial team fight tools. They've got package. They've got Call the Forge God. Peng, when he hits this Void Staff, is going to hit like an absolute truck. Already, with three items on the cork, he got the two shutdowns earlier on in the game. Is one of the carries to look to for Oplon and who we looked to in their one-game victory to be the carry, to be the person who picked up the correct people at the correct times. Doesn't have that same agency on the corky, but he needs to do the same sort of thing where we're relying on him as a win condition. We need the corky to start finding crucial poke at crucial times. It relies on the rest of Oplon helping him, though, setting up around the bot side of the map, setting up around the top side of the map, wherever the objective of focus is. If Hoplon can be there and they can use Peng, he needs to get out of the side lane, group up with the team and use these Corky missiles now with that Void Staff completed to complete advantage. Four item Corky in the late game. Crucial for Hoplon if they want to have any hope. As it goes in aggressively here, but he's going to get caught out by the Ornorn. It goes into stasis here. Hangs over the wall. They found Jocko out from this. It's a good fight for Oplon so far. Scarlet has the Banshee's Veil, but it's a big ultimate from Sejuani. They only find Dalek though. Steelback goes low. Effort off for a Scarlet's second or so. Touched. Scarlet doing a lot of damage still, but on finding Jocko off of this, whether they can go into a Baron. Start it off now. Yo's going to have to teleport back yeah. in afterwards. They... Well, they have to try here. The jungle is dead, but they have no frontline. They need to wait for Dalek to re get his HP back. He's going to TP back into the pit, be that frontline that they need. Peng, three rockets still going. The Azir going to be the one chunking them from outside the pit. There's no smite. This should be Oplons. Right, for Solari here, but Scarlet's gone in. He finds it, his red team secure the Baron here. Oplon, Dalek gone very low. They try and find Scarlet as well. Shanfire, one more auto will do it. Zekor over the wall, the Leandri's burn. He gets the Q to get that lifesteal back. A little bit of Omni Vamp. No cancelled, but it's Dalek who's gonna Ooh. get taken out here. Here comes Azza, one more auto will do it. Takes out Dalek, he's legendary. He would have gone down, but Oplon get the Baron. And that's worthwhile, I think, if you're Oplon. It depends what they lose in these next 30 to 40 seconds. Dalek and Shenfire are dead. A top tier two will probably be an okay sacrifice. But the team fight started off with Oplon getting Jocko. The frontline differential was all that all too much. Jocko here with this largely bruiser-esque build falls a lot faster than Dalek does. Kia once again not ready with the team to start off the fight. But Oplon, in the midst of all this, getting absolutely poked out by Scarlet. He dashes in, gets immediately exhausted. So that makes the team fight a lot harder for them. Would have probably killed Dalek there and then. Jikor just barely gets away here. And really good ad uh, adaptation from Shernfire to say, I am not important. I will go down with the team. Peng here with a 
Very greedy, but very wise Baron Recall to get out to safety. And Jiko again, just living on a prayer right here. The Battle Dance comes through. Guardian helps out. Very tight margins for Artplum, but they have Baron on three. Now they have to try and utilize it. Group up as five. You've still got Corky. Four item spike. Your Ezreal. Three item spiking as well. Please group up. Use this poke. Set yourself up under turrets. And don't give this way back into the game for Solari. They've got the gold lead. But this is your chance to try and take it back. We said at the beginning of this, this would be a real mod slinger of a game. Both teams back and forth now. Solari that we're able to take the advantage back from the jaws of Oplon after that early dragon lead, securing three dragons in a row. Misfires after misfires from Oplon, but it is Oplon that find the team five victory at 32 minutes or so. Get that Baron, and now they have to prevent this soul from Solari, otherwise it's going to be an absolute disaster. An Infernal Soul on either of these compositions is absolutely terrifying. The poke with an Infernal Soul is deadly if you're Oplon. The really consistent DPS from a Kaiser and an Azir with an oh, oh Jocko. It might have been caught. He doesn't have a way out here. He's going to get taken down immediately. And that's exactly the pick that Oplon needed. Oh, and he's just too far forward there. Even if he's going for an engage, his team are nowhere nearby. Caught out in no man's land was looking for that deep flying angle from a long time in advance for Oplon. They do their due diligence. They catch out the monkey and take him back to the grave. Now three for three on the dragon stacks. Oplon, they've still got a little bit of time to work with this Baron, but it won't be too much mid-tier 2. Likely going to be their focus, but I don't know that they'll be able to get it. They have got three people of Solari looking to try and defend up against it, and that wave is looking fairly weak. Fairly weak indeed. Azza goes in, they found Z-Core. That's going to be Azza. He, he flashes the Ornorn as well. He's in the front line now and doing absolutely serious damage. Going to have heal available in a few seconds or so. Can they find the Stunner to show Empire? Yes, they just can. A roundabout here. It's a lot of damage. Steel back signs engaged onto Dalek. Nautil Assault has come onto Twist, but they can't find any more. But it's two kills in response. Lovely from Azza. He was reminding you that although they've lost that Dragon, they've lost the Baron. He is still 9-0. Full build now at 35 minutes. An absolutely lethal presence on the Solari team. All actually engaged by the Kyo ultimate there. Picks out Jiko from a lineup of Dalek and the AD carry. Finds the correct member. And beautifully followed up on Azza there. Dives into the back line. One shots the Ezreal before there's really any chance for him to say anything. And even through now this frozen heart. You know that this Kaiser is going to be dealing so much damage. That Lord Dominic's regard has so much value in this matchup. The Frozen Heart only adding to it really here as Peng now the, the real carry force for Oplon needs to keep pumping out the damage. We saw little glimpses of it at the bottom side of that fight. He was really tearing through, chewing through a lot of the slowy health bars, but he needs a little bit extra. Needs something more from his team to try and help out, the, help out with that damage profile. Those two kills ultimately don't mean anything. We've got a Baron spawning in two, two and a half minutes time. We're waiting for that Infernal Soul as well. There's going to be a bit of a window where Baron's up and Dragon isn't. Ornhorn mid. The engage, Ornhorn comes out. Jocko's found an engage onto the back line. Here goes, Zekor goes down. So does Peng. Peng's into stasis now. It's a massive victory for Solari so far. Twist is over the wall. And so is Dalek. His tail between his legs. And Scarlet is going to find Schoenfire as well. And just like that. At the turn of a hat, it's a great snipe from Azza. And Solari have sniped Poplon's chances right before the next dragon. Couple minutes oh, out. Just gorgeous. Jocko's flank. It fumbled them at the dragon, but it came up huge for the fight that mattered. They get the massive engagement. The Wukong Cyclone onto two in the backline. Jiko still with Flash, never even able to react. And like you said, Don Jake, at the drop of a hat, Solari take the game. You called it perfectly. It was one team fight. It was 40 minutes in, and it was Solari that won it. Absolutely, and it was pretty much.